Hi, I'm Scott Lane. We did a fundraiser for the upstairs art space here in the historic Missile Dines building as some of Tryon's really neat art collections showed up. Let me show you what these guys brought. Hi, my name is Alan Peoples. I moved to Tryon in 1979 as the principal of an elementary school. Shortly thereafter, to continue my interest in history, I started collecting anything I could get from the town of Tryon. If you will look, you'll see my collection here to my right and behind. It's a small indication of what I do have. Here you have about turn of the century, you have a blown up postcard that had the original Tryon Bank in it, and that's now the Tryon Daily Bulletin Office. If you look at some of these others, you have the same views of Tryon Main Street from of roughly 1900 to 1936 here. And you move on to some other history. If you look here, this is 1928, the year that Morris was made. And if you'll see, Morris is standing off on the train here. The interesting thing is there's a gentleman here coming across the road to get onto the train. And there's another gentleman in the second story looking at the window, what's going on. Notice the older model cars. Further to the right, I have a collection of signs, E.G. Ballou Real Estate. I don't know much about the history of that. However, Mr. Leonard, who ran Leonard's store out near Harmon Field, used to sell fruit on the weekend. This was his sign that he put out for people to see. Below that is the Tryon Gas for Less sign. I bought this in 1983 from two people who were hauling it to the junk shop and paid them to deliver it to my house. Further to the right, you will see Tron first, then C.J. Lynch for real estate. It can be done. Charlie Lynch was well known in this area. He was a realtor. And we know that this sign is probably from the 20s or the 30s. To the right of that is a sign, excuse me, is an oil by John Rosmini. And this one shows his influence, or rather the influence on him by Picasso, who was a friend of his. Further to the right, is a picture of the Tron High School Tiger that someone commissioned back in the 70s. I was able to buy this at a garage sale. That's an original watercolor. Back further here to the right is a printer's tray that came from the Tron Daily Bulletin when they remodeled years and years ago. Below it sits a chair that came from the Sunnydale restaurant. I was able to get that and preserve that piece of history. The last and best thing I have probably is on the wall here, an oil that I've not been able to identify until Saturday night. I've owned this since sometimes in the 1980s. And when I bought it, it had a Stella Sassoon canvas over it. Someone else purchased that from me and I've been trying to get this identified since Saturday night. A gentleman was able to identify this as the British economist John Maynard Keynes, who lived from 1886 till 1946, and finally the mystery is solved. I love trying history and willing to collect it at any time. I'm Rick Dunn. I've lived in Tron about 30 years now, and I started heavily collecting Tron art in about 1998. I want to show a few of the pieces I think are important for the uh, town and for my collection. The first one being a painting of the circus in 1955 at Harmon Field, painted by Ms. Janey. Second of all, behind us is a scene of railroad cars being unloaded, painted at the Rock House, looking across to the depot by Ms. J.S. Cooper. Uh, next, we've got a, a, a portrait of George Aide's wife flanked on each side by two children's portraits that George Aide did. George Aide's wife went to Converse College. This is a painting of the Tron Country Club painted by Rule Tuttle in 1922 after he had finished a round of golf. Here we have a bronze done by Erskine that was found in New York City. And Erskine at one time had his studio there. Next is a painting with cattle 
by Cruz, and Cruz was famous for making photographs and black and white uh, postcards in Tron. Next we have a highway scene that was done by Reverend Whiteside, who's an Afro-American or was an Afro-American resident of Tron, who ran a dry cleaners and was a minister. And last of all is a Lawrence Mazinovich painting of Landrum, the countryside in Landrum, South Carolina. Hi, I'm Kim Nelson, and my husband and I own and run Skyuka Fine Art, uh, a gallery here in downtown Tryon. We've lived here for 10 years, and our gallery's been open for about four years now, and we're very honored to have been asked to participate in this show here at Misseldines by the Upstairs Art Space. Uh, we show living artists. We clearly represent living artists here, but this was also a nice bridge and opportunity to have other artists come in that we don't necessarily represent, uh, especially Will Barons here, this sculptor. Uh, Will Barons uh, grew up here, lived here all of his life, uh, but he doesn't do gallery work, but he's a, a world-renowned sculptor. Uh, so he was willing to bring in a couple pieces for this exhibit, and it is very special. But I'd like to show you some of the other artwork that we represent. Of course, my husband is our main anchor artist. Um, he's a portrait artist, but also does landscape and still life. And everything you see here is of the area. Um, every single painting is somewhere in Tryon or, or the surrounding areas, um, Polk County, but mostly Tryon. And uh, Keith Spencer is also another artist that we show. And he, we're currently uh, running an exhibit at our gallery called Grounded in Color. And so uh, we have many, many pieces by, by Keith, new, new pieces. Uh, in the past also, we've had some artists come and visit us. And while they were here, they painted um, some scenes of Tryon. So we have Michael McNamara here doing a downtown Tryon scene. And next to that, we have Gary Cooley, who did Side Street Pizza, which everybody knows and loves. Over here, we have Monica Jones, and she makes jewelry, handmade jewelry. We have a lovely Blue Ridge Mountain scene necklace here. We have another sculpture by Will Barons. And this happens to be a painting that my husband did on the Barons property. So it's called View from, uh, from Barons. And it's in an antique frame that we picked up at a garage sale here in Tryon. Through this way, we have some more Keith Spencers. And then on this wall, we have a fantastic Michael McNamara. And while he was here, he painted in Gillette Woods. And that's the view going out towards Columbus there. And down this way, we have some more Keith Spencers. Some beautiful examples uh, at Pearson's Falls. But then in the center here, we have a portrait of our daughter that my husband did, and it's an award winner with the Portrait Society of America, their international portrait competition, uh, as well as being a finalist in the Raymar art competition right now. And it happens to have been painted right in our own backyard in Gillette Woods. My name is Chris Armbrust. I've lived uh, in Tryon permanently for 11 years. Uh, but I've spent summers here for 41 years. Um, became very interested in the area's culture and art early on and began purchasing pieces as they were available. And they've come from a range of places, private collectors, uh, yard sales even. Uh, some of the pieces here uh, represent some of the earliest art done in Tryon. A uh, piece that I purchased early on is by Emma Payne Erskine, who did a great deal of painting. She was quite a renowned poet as well uh, and taught China painting courses in the area. Tryon Grapes is the uh, name of the piece. Below it is a more modern piece by Kathleen Carson depicting two of Tryon's best-known icons, the Tryon horse, 
affectionately known as Morris and Nina Simone, who was born in Tryon. To the right is Susan Erskine Rogers, wreath of dogwood. Uh, an interesting piece for its French connection is by Edward T. Ryerson, who had family connections with the Chicago Institute of Art. And uh, actually, I think he too was the commercial art directory for the Wonder Bread Company and depicted here is Mont Saint-Michel. Below it is a piece by friend Mike Locke, one of his early works depicting the road to Farmington. The Odalesque is by friend Jeannie Parker, uh, done quite early on in her career. And it's one of my favorite pieces, actually, I, which I bought at her estate sale. Below it is a modernist piece by Molly Clay Stokes, who was a student of Rosmini, and it was a gift to me from her, much in his modernist style. The large canvas at the top, Troika by Susan Harris, is an egg tempura, recent acquisition, uh, formerly living in Virginia, now lives in Green Creek, I think. Uh, below it is a lovely piece by Homer Ellertson, Gladiolas and Artichokes, and actually it was painted in the artist's studio at El Tarn. To the left of it is a study, a still life study by Ellen Day Hale, early on associated with the Tryon artist community and friend of Gabrielle Clemens. Above it is a quite early piece by Miss Bowman, who was the niece of one of the early advocates and founders of the Lanier Library. To the left of them are pansies, again by Edward Ryerson. Um, lovely little piece. And to the bottom left, a woodcut, quite large woodcut, by Charles Quest, who is principally known for his woodcuts, though many examples in other collections are, are oil paintings by him, quite lovely actually. And to the upper left, the earliest piece of Tryon art that is in my collection, uh, a sepia etching by Elliot Dangerfield, a frequent visitor to the Tryon colony. This piece done in 1873. What's always fascinated me about the whole process, actually, is that each of the canvases represents a captured moment in Tryon history, in a, an artist's mind, and in our community's artistic life. Thanks. Hello, I'm Noel Guffey. I moved to Tryon in 1972 because I love the, the little town. I still love it today. Uh, my business started as a hobby, which is Foothills Fine Art, and that hobby became a passion and a collection. So not only do I collect 
but I deal in fine art. One of the loves uh, is just the history that's involved with these artists and also the, uh, the variety of art that they did. Here's one example, Elizabeth Paxton Oliver. And this is very atypical. Normally, people think of her, they think of her birds. And this is a wonderful still life that she did. And I was drawn to it because it was atypical. Another one of the Tryon artists, which happens to be my favorite artist, is Lawrence Mazinovich. Mazinovich was born off the coast of San Francisco on a ship in 1859, I believe, and he ended up in Connecticut. This is a Connecticut scene that he painted. And then in 1920 or thereabouts, he came to Tryon. And these are two Tryon scenes that he painted. His wife was known as Miss Mazzy locally, and she was a music teacher. And she was one of Nina Simone's teachers and also one of the ones who helped Nina Simone progress to Asheville and then to Juilliard. Another one of my favorite artists is Homer Ellertson. Homer Ellertson also arrived in Tryon around 1920 and he built the local home where he lived called El Tarn, which means the tower. These are four uh, different scenes. Uh, this one's province of Quebec. These two are circus scenes. And this is titled Night Valencia. This artist is Will Henry Stevens. He was here briefly in Tryon in 1916. He's known for his abstract and for North Carolina and the southern states, this was a very atypical type of work. Here we have a historical portrait which was painted by David Silvette in 1935. This was exhibited at the High Museum in Atlanta in 1936. It's of, the portrait is of Mrs. Julian Calhoun. Here we have two Ernest Harrison Barnes. Barnes came to Tryon in the late 20s. He exhibited at the National Academy in New York City. This one I acquired first. It was exhibited at the Detroit Institute of Art in 1918 and is titled The Harvest Moon. But this one is the one that really excited me because it's the first Tryon scene that has turned up. And this is a view of Tryon Mountain as described on the back in, in Barnes handwriting. And it is painted from the Wilson farm on the Packlet River. Here we have Lois Wilcox. Wilcox Road in Tryon is named after her family. She was an artist and a teacher who taught art. This is a student of hers in my opinion. Some people have thought it might be a self-portrait. We'll never know because there's not a title associated with it. Here we have another Lawrence Mazinovich. This one turned up in New York. I was really tickled to get it and very proud to get it because uh, it is a Tryon scene. And it's uh, a view of Hogback, a very different view of Hogback with Rocky Spur to the right here. Here we have Charles Quest who moved here in 1970. He and his wife Dorothy, who was also a very fine artist, fell in love with the area. They came from St. Louis where Charles was the art professor at St. Louis University. Above, we have another Elizabeth Paxton Oliver. You saw her still life earlier, but this is an example of the birds that she's more noted for. Here, we have a Robert Lawrence. He designed his own frames, hand tinted them to suit himself, and he came to try in about 1950, as we, we believe. 